Uh, for today's edition of Simply Scrappy, we are going to actually put together a border that my son created. So a lot of you know I host in-person retreats three times a year. And in January, it happened to fall on my birthday. It started on my birthday. And so I had already mentioned to, um, and Campbell had plans. So I mentioned to Cooper, you know, do you want to come over to the hotel and hang out? And then we end up losing power. Anyways, he ends up at the hotel with me and he um, kind of took interest in the make and take I had set out. And I, and so then they stayed the night Friday. So he's there Saturday. I said, why don't I show you how to do it? And then you can teach everyone as they come over, you know, and walk through the instructions. And he was all about that. He did a great job and it was very helpful for me um, just to be able to, you know, do other things and not have to show each step of the border. Well, then on like, then he was asking me like, can I create my own? I was like, sure. And they had gone to the dads and come back. And so Sunday evening, he decided to, he's like, I'm going to make a make and take. We'll have, it's like, do you have one for Monday? Like, no, I don't have for Monday. It's the last day. We're all kind of wrapped up by then. And so he was working on this make and take. And when I came in Monday morning, because I went to bed before he did, he had created, he had taken pictures even, created a handout, had the whole table set up, had little signs. He labeled things better than I do. And I was like, you know what? I think you get to come to every retreat. And so I do need to actually start working on him for April and giving him some things to work on. So we are going to do Cooper's Border is what I'm calling it. And, and then I have another border idea for you using the 301 scallop punch. So this is the handout he created. I will, I am putting together a handout you can download. It will be on my website, hopefully by the end of today. Um, but isn't this adorable? He used his laptop and he took the pictures and he printed this in the hotel um, office area. There, that's why it's uh, black and white so that he could, and that's obviously all they had there. Um, but he even like followed kind of my lead on how I'd written out directions. Anyways, I think it's super cute. So this will be a, a color version you can download um, on the website here. So um, the make and take I had put together was using um, Nordic Winter. And so I think he was already kind of looking at those punches. I let him go over and pick out any paper pack he wanted. He chose Polar Lights. So this is the border that, that he put together. He uses the decorative trimmer. He uses a border system and he has four layers of paper. And then, of course, a 301 scallop, which I had out from the other make and take. And then he fussy cut out some polar bears for that. So we're going to make a version of that. And then after that, I'm just going to show you some easy measurements. If you like the 301 scallop, if you have it, want some ideas for use it on a border. Uh, we're going to put some of these together. So we're going to work our way through this because I haven't actually ever made his border. And I'm going to make it with some different selections. So he chose winter. It still feels like winter. And granted, I, you know, I probably should have done this a couple weeks ago when it was actually winter. But yeah, like Mary Jo was saying, having snow today. I think it is a little bit warmer here. It's not quite as bitter. Um, but I'm ready for that bitterness to move on out. So when we choose paper for this, we need four options. So he chose a dark print. He did a great job choosing his paper. He has a dark print. He has this little half inch strip of um, shimmer, white shimmer peeking out underneath, which was appropriate for the snow. He made this into a border for his skiing trip. And then he chose a print that has a good contrast underneath here and then navy as his border. And then for tools, an edge style border punch, he chose tree line, uh, the decorative trimmer along the bottom, a decorative blade to add a little dimension, of course, the three-in-one scalp layering punch with the mini snowflake in the middle. And then he fussy cut out the polar bear. So I decided today to work through, I chose boho. So I was actually going through the punches thinking, you know, what punch would be appropriate to use if you wanted some ideas. And the tree line is great. It can be used for winter. It could be used for outdoor hiking, spring, summer, um, a lot of different uses. So I do recommend that. This one's sold out online. I do have it in stock. If you have the tree line border punch, it was a little bit bigger, that would work also. It's just gonna have a little bit deeper of a tree. Some other cute options would be Home Sweet Home, 
would be appropriate for a lot of uses. Um, if you wanted one that wasn't so much of a icon, um, the is it keystone? I would say keystone keyhole, the pyramid keyhole. Someone fix me. I I remember a lot of things, but this punch I always struggle with. Um, this would be really cute and kind of generic. Um, but the one I thought would be fun to play with is Sane Castles. This one is sold out also, but I think a lot of us have it in our stash. One of the books I have coming up is a um, one I took Emerson and Friends on Senior Spring Break a couple years ago, and I know that book will be in Boho. And so, and it's mostly Fast to Fab. It will all be Fast to Fab. But some borders are always nice to work in with Fast to Fab. So I'm going to use um, the sand castles for mine. And so choosing paper is always a little bit of a challenge to think through. Um, so I was looking at his border, for example. You know, the first decision point is what do I want to punch the sand castles from? Um, I went through Boho. A lot of these are neutral. Kind of a white would probably work well. Um, but then I found this one in the stack. It's kind of a basket weave almost. I'm like, well, that would be appropriate for sand. So I'm going to punch this as the top layer. And then um, I'm going to skip the shimmer selection and then think about what I want underneath it. So I need something with contrast and any of these would work. It's just going to kind of depend on the vibe. I have this light green color. If I could go a little bit more orange or I could go a little bit more yellow with the sand. I don't love the yellow by itself against the khaki that's just a preference for me and I'd have to have some other color but I also will be able to bring in the border and instead of using cardstock I could also use one of these other papers because they do um, look nice with each other and I thought I mean the yellow is fine but like what if I used um, this blue and the red tone um, actually in that order so the red would be the where the navy is and this would be the middle piece, and then the sand on top. And then I have to decide, you know, on it, you could make it work with any of these. You know, as you start to flip through paper, you can kind of see obvious choices. This is one of the prints that comes in Boho. It has yellow on the back. Um, but this would be, this would be fine to use maybe like here. You're going to lose a lot of the print. If you choose a print, and he did have, this has a tonal print, but it's, it is tonal. If you have too much of a print, sometimes you'll lose the design of the punch against whatever's behind it. So if I did choose this, I would probably make sure I had a high contrast if I wanted to see any articulation in the punching. Um, or I, you know, I have a pink, I could punch the pink that's definitely gonna pop out or red. Just as you flip through your papers, you know, just kind of see where you find the contrast. And then for shimmer, I did pull out several shimmers. Um, I could also skip the shimmer and just and do the yellow. I could have a little peak of yellow under there. So I'm reserving that as an option. And then I chose, so these are three shimmers we have that are all in the light category. So in the middle is white. I don't know how well it shows up on camera. The top up here is shell. There's a little bit of a pinky hue to it. And then underneath that, is autumn hay shimmer that has a little bit more sandy beachy color so i did like his choice of shimmer to pop out i'm going to go ahead and punch my layers and then decide if i want to choose one of the shimmers um, or pop in the yellow i suspect the white's a little bit too bright um, the autumn hay is probably what i would think when i used vitamin c that has a pink in that collection and so um, that shell shimmer can go really nicely with ones that have pinky in them. So we'll kind of pull this all together and then see how it pops up at the end. So my first step is to punch the edge with the sand castles. You guys know what I did. I got out the cartridges, but I didn't actually get out my system. So here I am awkwardly digging in the box beside me, but I found it. Punch my edge style. We have a lot of edge style punches to choose from. 
some generic, some more iconic. When I say iconic, it's I mean ones that are like an icon, you know, like saying castle or something. On his directions, he said to cut it at, let's see, two inches. And I'm not quite sure where he's measuring two inches. That can be a little bit tricky with the um, decorative trimmer. So we're going to figure this out. He did use um, the wavy edge. So I'm going to slide his paper, his border in here, figure out which way he cut it. Looks like he cut right here. And so when he cut, he was measuring out It is too. I'm impressed. Maybe it held this a different way. It's basically down this cut line right here is where he's seen two inches. So my trimmer's blue. Yours is probably white. Um, but there's a measurement up here. You can see kind of the little hatches for the measurements. We have um, the half, the quarter, the eighth that help you kind of cut out. So all these little boxes are a quarter inch. And so he was sitting the top of his design basically along this swell edge and cutting. Um, the trick for the edge style is when you punch it, it does not come off the paper. And so when you're looking at any cartridge, if it is a straight bottom on the design, it is an edger. The difference in a knockout and the edger is a knockout has a straight top also because it's just knocking out a design on it. So if a straight edge at the bottom, I can't think of any design that punches a chain with a straight edge. You, that means you have to cut it off. Versus when you look at a chain style, you can see um, the, the whole um, border on here. Um, like polar bears, you know, you can tell it's punching that out. You know, side note, one of the ones that I didn't realize mushrooms was an edger until I actually punched it the first time. There was this one tricked my mind a little bit. I was thinking it was like going to punch out a chain, but you can tell it has a straight bottom. It's just got a little bit wavy. And for some reason, I thought I was going to punch a wavy chain of mushrooms, but it's an edger. You have to trim it off to get it off there. So the other thing to know about when you're cutting with a decorative trimmer is there isn't a, you either have it centered or not. So if you truly wanted your cut centered, you have to go a quarter inch down, a quarter inch up. If you want this to be centered down, it doesn't really matter so much for this design. Um, let's see if he did. I think he actually did center his paper. He is a scrapbooker in the maker because I'm not sure I taught him that. So he has, he says two inches, but basically just look along right here, you know, along this swell edge and determine where to cut it. Some of the designs like the sand castles, they're going to point up. I might pull this down just a little bit. So the, those top flags are more the top of the two inches. And then I'm going to cut it with the wavy edge. So pretty simple cut there. And then his next border layer is this layer with a print and he um, cut it with one edge with a decorative blade. And he cut this to two inches. So I have to choose a decorative blade. Uh, we have a lot of choices. My go-to for sand or beach is usually decal, um, but wave would be appropriate also if you are going with more of a water theme. I'm going to choose deckle. The edge, one edge of my paper is already straight, so I don't have to worry about that. And I said I was going to use this one for the next layer, so I just need a two inch cut with a decorative blade on one end. Go ahead and flip my blade black, or I will forget. Then we'll have deckle and other. I was impressed with this ability to find some layers in this too. I can decide, you know, you might want to tweak your measurements or not. This one looks like it will fit nicely. I have a little bit of space underneath here for that pop of color he suggested. 
Okay, and then for the, my navy layer, this is two and three fourths. I'm going to cut two and three fourths with this one. I don't think the edge is completely straight. I'm going to give myself a clean straight edge and then measure two inches. I could tell looking down the line, it wasn't quite lining up. Oh, I said two and three fourths. See, I cannot talk and cut at the same time. Two and three fourths for the base. And now I have a two inch paper I can use for something else. So this will layer on here. I can decide here, depending on your design, you know, the trees look fine to overlap. I can decide, you know, do I like that overlap of his layer look, you know, the trees kind of cross the pattern into the solid? Um, does that look awkward for the sandcastles? You know, do I want to pull it down so the sandcastles are completely just on the green color or I could push it all the way up? You're going to have a, you know, a contrast between the layers. I think it's probably fine for the flags. I'll leave it pretty much as is, following his directions. Now I have to decide, you know, do I want to pop in color down here? I think looking at this, if I put that yellow in there, it's going to scream at me. Like, I, I you know, if I saw the overall page, I had yellow overall, maybe. I think it's going to be too much. I think the shimmer is a better choice. It's a subtle sand. Um, I do think shell's a little too pinky for the paper. White's a little bit too bright. I'm going to go with autumn hay. I think it's one that's actually more true sand vibe. And I'm going to cut in half inch. Autumn hay is the thickest cardstock we have. I don't know why, but it's a pretty heavy weight. He said half an inch. Let's see if that's enough to layer behind. I think I have some nails to grab the end of this. Just a little pop of shimmer behind there. Kind of accents that wave to it. I'll go with it. So as you're adapting this, you know, I like I said, I'm going to stay true to his measurements so I can show him when he gets home. He'll be very pleased. I told him this was today's. He's like, Mom, aren't you a little late? I'm like, it's never too late. It feels like winter. Um, and we're, we're moving into summer with this, right? Um, but like I said, you know, you can tweak the size of your layers. That's why I usually work from the top down, you know, determine your, your top layer, layer that and on the bottom. Um, sometimes you tend to want to like choose build from the bottom up. Sometimes that works. This one I think is a little bit better or not. Okay. So then I need to accent it. He fussy cut polar bears, which I thought was pretty impressive too. Like I said, this is a whole border punch. He just punched one section and fussy cut out his polar bears. Um, and I pulled out mushrooms to give that as an example. If you do have the mushroom punch, this would be a fun one too to punch out. And then you can fussy cut out a row of mushrooms. If you were making your border, maybe like with this, with the spring collection in one of the mushrooms, you could have a little section of mushrooms right there. That uh, would be super cute. Um, I have the, this is our three in one scallop square. You can only get it with an advisor from an advisor, um, but there's plenty in stock. I have them in stock um, and it is fun to play with. I have used this more than I thought. So the way that this three in one works is on the back of it, it has, it's locked right now, but it's a one, two and three. So let me show you how that punches. I'm gonna start with three. We're gonna see how well it does with autumn. I mean, there's a reason why we don't use this very much with punches, it is heavy. Let's see how it does. It's probably going to shake my camera because the force it takes. So this is the three where it punches out three pieces. I'm going to move it to two. It's punching fine. This takes a little bit of firmness. I don't know why I always feel like I have to use the sound effects when I punch. I'm like, oh, or, you know, someone like a little groan or something. Maybe so everyone around you appreciates how much effort you put into that. <laughs> 
And then number one is it's going to give me the solid piece. So that's why it's called the three and one. You have one, two, and three pieces. And so these are fun for layering. And you obviously need to punch more with just a shimmer to get some layered effect on it. So let's pull out my papers. Again, even the ones I didn't use, like this one is a white with this more of an oval design on it. That would be fun to layer. I'm going to go back and punch the three. Yes, Robin. It's like when you're playing tennis and you have to like make sound effects. The caveat to this punch is they sometimes do not want to come out very well. And you will need to get um, your multi-purpose tool. You need to be aware of what setting you're on and how many pieces you should expect to come out of it. Because sometimes they do get jumbled. Sometimes it's fine. You can straighten it out, back out. But if you keep punching and you have pieces that should be coming out and they don't come out, you're going to jam it. And then you're going to be messaging me. And I'm going to be like, did you clear it before? And no, and it's fine. I mean, it's just the, it's kind of like just the bad part about some of these is when they're punching multiple pieces, they can get hung up on each other. But here we have three pieces. And the back side of that was green. So then I can play with my layering a little bit. And maybe I don't want shimmer. I think I actually want like pull one of these. And if you are gluing it where you're putting it, it's fine if you don't have a solid base. For this one, you know, the dark shown through, I'm not sure. I think for this one, I'd probably want to show a base underneath of it. The only base I have right now is sh the shimmer. But you could either fit that inside. So I can either punch this as a number one so it's solid, or I can fill in the center with the middle piece. And then I can put something on the top. Maybe I don't really want to use this green, but I, it probably shows a little bit more contrast on camera. You can see my point of filling that in the middle. For his, he punched and alternated. So he punched a frame on the outside and then alternated the middle here and then put a little icon in the center. So this is just, this is when you can play and have fun. You know, the, this pink would pop out there too. So let me punch. It might be fun to have the middle piece. Or it might be fun to have that pink come on the outside. I'm going to punch a number one. I'll punch the three. It's it's always nice to have three pieces to decide. There's one, two. Sometimes they fly when they come out. That came out or not. Nope, it didn't. See, they're tricky. They'll hide in there. So I could also put this as the base. It's going to pull that corally orangey pinky color down. You could put that in the middle. This is all very subtle in the layering. So have to play with it and see what you like. But basically it gives you a little spot to embellish, a little icon or something, you know, a little fish, a sticker, a sun, anything little. It's fun to play with it. Um, for those punches, I have, I don't know how many of you guys have a little basket that looks like this. And if you have been around CM a long time, um, you probably have a basket of small punches you don't use very much. We had the little micro makers that had two icons. There was purple, uh, orange, blue, and green. We've had the mini punches. That's where the snowman came from. Some of these, which are not creative memories, you know, just you collect along the way. The little pocket punches. Um, none of these are, are too beachy. Oh, we've had these, which you'll see coming up. So just anything you have little will fit nicely inside that scallop square. Uh, and then to finish off this border, you know, he used many letters on his title, which, and they're metallic, so they shine. And then I, another icon over here. Um, I have a hard time doing my final embellishment, not knowing what, what this is going to go on on the page. Boho does have embellishments. 
So when I'm ready to actually do this page, sometimes the real embellishments This is where you like you pull it all together. This is where the design really comes together with because the embellishments usually will pull in all the colors and then your layers suddenly pop. And this has some mandalas too. You know, you could layer with these. If you have the circle ones, if you have secret box quarter four, it had the circle version of this in there. Let's just play, just play and layer with your layers. See what colors you want to pop out. I don't think I've used the blue, but you and your, you get where I'm going. So that is Cooper's border. I thought he did a great job. And this whole thing reminds me, I need to decide what to have him use for my April one, the end of April. So maybe something with whatever's coming out next week. We'll see what that is. I'm going to pick up my pieces and we are going to work on, I'm going to show you another quick border to do with the scallop. Move all these out of the way. So the next border to make, oh, and one last thing about this one is when I do it here, I guess I should show you how I hear it. I go from the top down. And so I will put some repo tape first, kind of on those waves where it will, so I'll have my half inch piece in place underneath. And then I put tape on that. And layer that. For those of you that love foam squares, this is a great place to use foam squares. It's a good idea, Judy. I don't, I always forget about them a little bit. I have them over here, but they would pop up um, some of these little pieces. And then that's ready for the embellishment. And then I had these, so two basic borders also using the scallop. You can see I punched some of the same, just alternated the same papers. And these I brought in a third color and I think a little bit of shimmer for those. And then again, just finding a small little icon to put in the middle. So um, snowman's over here, I put these on diagonal and then the airplanes over here to fill in those. For this one, I pulled out Autumn Harvest. How many piles do I have to move to find what I just had my hands on a couple minutes ago? Okay, so for Autumn Harvest, I have not used this a whole lot yet. Um, but it had some nice contrast in here to work with. This one is a little bit of a fake out because you'd think that this has a wide piece underneath and it just has strips. So it's a way to conserve paper, especially when you're using up scraps. Maybe you just have thin scraps. We're going to cut thin strips to put behind it. So I pulled out Autumn Harvest. I had some, you know, strap, straps, scraps of strips in my folder and um, this one is actually this blue actually came out of a um, spring medley but i had looked at spring first and realized i like the texture of this navy behind it um i like this print but i didn't have a long piece left so that would be good to punch in with some of these and then i have some prints to choose from here i need something to create this background for so i don't want something too loud i think the white would be a little bit too bold. I want to use this navy on the edges, so I probably won't use hot fudge. 
So I could use the orange would be really pretty. And the apples would be pretty also. And we already talked about the back side. So let's go with the orange leaves. I need to cut my strip first. So this is two and a quarter for your base and then half inch strips behind there with one of your decorative lights. For both of these, I use the scallop. So two and a fourth for your border base. And then I choose a blade. Um, I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use the postage stamp. Um, it's actually called stamping. Stamping is one of them where it matters where you see the edge. And so if you've watched me before, you know that I put a T at one end of it and the top, that goes to the top. And that means I'm gonna see my edge on the outside of my cut. And I just, I just did this completely wrong. I don't know why you guys haven't fixed me yet because I don't want this as a base. I'll just make two. So we'll have this be the base of one. This is the base of the other. And we will alternate the colors. I'll make two of them. So now I need navy edges for this one with this stamping blade. So my first cut is to give me the stamping edge, and I only need this to be about half inch wide. It doesn't matter if I flip the blade, the bottom, the end of it's going to be hidden underneath. And then I want a second one for the other side. And I decide, you know, what edge do I want underneath this blue? I think that would be a good place to use um, the apple paper, but let's use a different blade. Be a similar effect. Victorian wave. Let's do the Victorian. This one, while it does have a little bit of a pattern to it, it's not one that I notice. So I don't have it marked cut one way or the other. I need two of these. My straight blade back in so I don't forget. So two borders going on here, the orange. So I, I punched red for this. You can see the back side of this is kind of that uh, it's the khaki words. You're not going to see too much of the words, so I don't think that's a great one to use underneath. And this one was navy. With my postage stamping edges. And those will tuck in under there. So now I need to think about how you want to adhere this. So you could go ahead and adhere it. You have two options. You can use repo tape or you can use mini tape. I have repo out, so I will just put a little down here. I should be using my silicone mat, but for the sake of just getting it done, I'm going to use this mat. You can put the tape on the edge of the back of the paper or the strip. You just have to make sure that when you are adhering this down, you want to see the same amount over there. And if this is too much for you to manage, then just cut a wide base. If you are using cardstock especially, and we have a good supply of that, you're not trying to conserve paper. If you wanted to do that, then I would make your base 
It's about two and five eighths, and then you could just lay your paper down on top. Here's my mini. Y'all know I'm still using old mini. Old mini works well too. Current mini works. I like the new mini tape. I do have one around here. I think it's uh, just a little bit harder to see where you're placing the center of it. The mini one was, oh, well, the old mini was easier for me to see exactly where my tape is going. And then also you could just come down the back side of it. Someday I will use up all this mini tape and will stop using it on camera. But today is not the day. So now I can decorate and I know I want to use some of the plaid. I could also pop the red in here for this side. This tan color could work in. And then I also have this blue. Oh, I have some cardstock in here. I don't have too much of the other prints left, but I do have some shimmer, blue shimmer I used for the make and take that went with this. And then I still have my autumn hay shimmer that actually would work really well with this piece. So let's get some options punched and we'll decide what direction we want to go. Looks like I'm still on three. And a shimmer piece. I don't think that last one flew out, did it? Sure. So then you can start piecing together and deciding where you want. You can go diagonal or straight, like I did in my example borders. Just see how the colors look against what you have, and then you can decide, you know, what which way you want to do it. If I use the inside of this plaid, you're going to see more of it. I could layer it inside of a blue shimmer. I could layer that inside of autumn hay shimmer. The words punch like this, it just looks more like a khaki. If you have a little tiny apple punch, I, I didn't find it yet, but I was thinking with the apple border maker, you could fussy cut out little apples to sit in there. That's probably what I'm going to do. So once you decide which pattern you want, you can always change it up. You can do the same or you can do different. On the snowmans, these are all the same. On my travel one, I alternated. So I had dark, 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 light blue, light blue. This is autumn, hay, or no, this was a tan. I think some of the planes are on me. So you can just see how you can reverse it. So when you're deciding to you get to the point and you want to adhere it, spacing is a little bit of a challenge. If you are starting in the center, it's always easier to work your way out. And so if you have an even number like I did here, you know, find the center, find your six inch mark and decide how far you want them spaced. So if you want them spaced an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch, then you're just adhering your first one up to that point and this one down to that point. And then as you work your way out, you just have to maintain your spacing. If you're using an odd number, which I didn't on either of these, you would start in the center. And so I would find my six inch mark, adhere it there, and then I would work my way out 
just with spacing. I decide I do like the plaid. I really like how the plaid pops here. I could even do all three colors if I wanted to have autumn in the middle and then right on the outside. Yeah, I can feel my piece still in there. If worst case, if you know you have one, it won't come out. If you just like punch, punch, punch and get it to release and get out all of your scraps. Sometimes you just have to let one go to clear it out. And I want a red for right here. So I determined my base design. So now I want to decide a design for the middles. You know, what could I alternate to show? Um, I don't want to highlight too much red. So I have the red there, red there, and there's red in the stripe. I do like the shimmer, but this is not the shimmer. That's the um, back of the blue, which came on the back of the plaid. I have to think about alternating. And if you use like a print in the inside, like this plot on the inside, then you don't necessarily have to put icons in the middle. The paper can just be, this looks a little red, white, and blueish. I might change that up. Obviously the whole thing is red and blue, blue shimmer. I need to punch another one with that plaid. I could always do plaid centers if I wanted plaid on all of them. Fill the center with the blue shimmer. That might be pretty. So then I would need to punch one more for that one. The bad part about this is sometimes you end up with all these extra pieces you don't use, and then you end up with just as many scraps as when you started. So that, I kind of like that. I mean, obviously there's a million ways you could to work these, but I have, you know, I've highlighted the plaid in the middle and then the plaid is in the center there. And then on the outside there, I have shimmers all along the way, even on the center, you know, and then I could just fussy cut out a little, um, apple or maybe some other icon that goes with the layout and put it in the center. It's nice to have that white space. Um, it will pop out something on top, but then I don't feel like I have to fill in the plaid or the blue um, for that. So I'm happy with that one. I'll leave them at a diagonal. So now I can look at this one. I don't want red on my leaves. The back side of the red is this khaki, which I don't think works very well either. I do like the plaid still. I could even just do three or do five. Um, the shimmer is fine too, if I wanted to work in some shimmer. I could alternate. 
like blue shimmer, blue shimmer. In there. If I did, I feel like when I have the white or the autumn haze shimmer, I do need to put something on there, which is fine. I can fill these in with leaves. The blue shimmer is so much thinner, it's much easier to punch. I don't think I need any more blue centers. I'm not going to use those. I'm not sure the center here. I need to punch probably the autumn hay to go in the middle right there. You could also skip the middle, and I did do that. It doesn't look like I did that on here. These have paper, but it's the same paper. Um, if I wanted to let that orange show through, I could either go back and punch orange, like I did punch this to have behind there, or you can just let it sit in the middle. You don't have to fill in both spaces. I was thinking maybe this punch, this is the little pocket punch, just to see kind of how this would. Um, I don't know that I want to use brown. The red, I'll punch the red so you can see the contrast. I'd probably go find a darker orange, like a burnt orange, to go more with the tone. It's a little bit big for the space, but it does work. You could also just punch... You know, I don't have to punch the three. I could punch. Make sure I have it unlocked. I think that's right. Okay. When you're punching the one, it does not go down very far. I almost thought I had it locked. So you can get just get a solid piece. A little leaf there. And yeah, you know, if I don't want that hole in the middle, I could punch it on two. If I punch it on two, I'm going to get that whole square. And then that would fit my leaf nicely like that. So many options. Do you guys have any questions? Have you guys played with this at all? Have you made borders with it? Um, it's been out for a while. I think it came out at the beginning of the year. I think it was new in January. Um, I have used it actually more than some punches. I've never even got out of the box yet. But this is my dilemma, though, is then you have all these extra pieces. Do you keep them? Do you throw them away? I mean, they are a tiny little scrap. If it was any other shape, it would be in the trash. But because it, like goes together. I feel like this compulsion to keep them all because you never know when you might need just a little piece of something to tuck in behind a border. So I'm not settled on that one yet, but for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and glue this one. I do like precision point for this. My silicone mat. I'm going to move my examples out of the way. So not a little bit. So I guess we want to center the first one. The nice thing about using the mat is I can see my center point right here coming out on each side of it. So I just need to adhere it so those points of that are on the line. So you can either, the, the big ones you can use repo, it's not so hard when you get down to the middle. 
and the precision point, especially for anything small punched. Sometimes if you really have fat fingers, if you have trouble navigating it, um, do you guys have the reversible tweezers? They are nice also for placement. It's easier to hover where you want it to be and then let go of it when you're ready. Now I can continue using repo tape on these. or I can use my precision point. So the way the precision point works, it is a dot of glue. Find something to dot it on. Sometimes you have to prime it if it's been sitting. You could, you know, there's different ways to glue this. You could put little dots, you know, that you're gonna frame this. Can grab it. Usually want to let it dry just slightly so it's a little bit tacky. The thing about precision point is it is it is not easy to, to change your mind. So you have to be confident in what you're placing. You have like a few seconds, but then that glue starts to dry and you're done. But it also holds well, I think. If you're worried about these getting moved around, maybe you're making the border, you're not putting on anything yet. You want to make sure your pieces are adhered. Um, I do think it has its place in our scrap toolbox. And then down, so if I move my way down, I usually will place the bottom one first. So decide how far down do you want this one to be? And then this one would sit in the center of it. So you say, well, if I want this one about half inch off the bottom, I can see my point down here on the half, pretty even on the sides. Shirley's saying she throws away all the small pieces. I struggle with that. I struggle throwing too much away. I mean, if it's a real scrap, it's a real scrap. These borders are definitely kind of a labor of love. The thinking about it. Choosing your papers, choosing your style. It's definitely something for the fussy crafter. Sometimes I feel fussy and I don't really feel like scrapbooking though, right? <laughs> Sometimes you're in the mood to sit and just mess with something. Maybe you don't have the creative energy to think of a layout, but you want to have your hands on your tools. Uh, borders can be a nice way. And then you can, you know, slide it back into your project folder with your collection. And the next time you get that collection out, you'll be so excited you have a border already made. I know I will appreciate having the boho. I'm going to have to make a second one, though. So I have two, one for each side. I'm sure they will fit in somewhere perfectly. The girls were too old to make sandcastles, but we definitely spent some time on the beach. And then for the top, I can just turn this around so it's closer to me while I'm sitting. I mean, and it's true. I mean, you're right, Helen. It's like it's easy to repunch this. There's just something in me that likes to use things up. And I don't like waste. So 
So I'm curious if any of you make these. I definitely want you to post them so I can see. And I will share Cooper. I will post it for him. So if you do post Cooper's border, if you want to hashtag a Cooper's border, and just post it in the ideas group. And then I can sort the hashtag one day and show him what you guys created. When we do hang up from this, I will get the PDF handout finalized and I will put it up as a blog post on my website, which you guys know is up and coming. And I'll share the link for that also. And so then you can download the handout to have when you're ready to actually make these. And these will be on the same handout. I'll put the instructions to this one at the bottom. And then I hopefully will work my way backwards and get the blog post up for the rest. So that looks adorable. It could be, um, you know, the little leaf in the middle, or I could find the apple, little jewel icons, whatever you have that might go with your pages. Um, easy to pull together. So hopefully you have some fun creating some borders with these. And I appreciate you guys all joining me. Um, I look forward to this next Friday. I will be gone. I can't believe that's like spring break. It's a little bit anxiety provoking because 